I'm going to show you how to add up to three decimal places in numbers. So I can have 2.43 and 4.55. Now when you're working with your children on decimals, it's really important that when they are saying the decimal number, they say the digit separately. 2.43. It is not 2.43 because 40 would be up here in the tens column. Okay, so it is 2.43 and 4.55. Okay, and we're going to add these up to see what my answer is going to be. Okay, so it is again important that the children understand the columns that we are dealing with. So your teacher would ensure that the children know which column is which. In this case, my ones column is here and then I have my decimal point on the line and then I have my tenths and my hundredths. Now tenths and hundredths might be written like that. They could also be written as a fraction. Okay. Now the decimal point never moves. The decimal point stays where it is. Okay. So I'm going to put in my first number and then my second number and the decimal point never moves so I know that decimal point is going to stay where it is. Okay, so I'm going to put in either of the numbers first because we're still adding it doesn't matter which way round I place the numbers because they will go together to make a whole number so I'm going to go with the number that I've written first, 2.43. So I'm going to put my two ones in, point four, so that's four tenths, and three hundredths, okay? And then I'm going to put in my next number, four ones, okay? So decimal point, the column to the left of the decimal point is always my ones column. So I'm going to put in my four ones, five tenths, and five hundredths. Okay. Now with all the other addition that we've done, we've taught your children to start in the, in the smallest column. We've never taught them to start always in the ones, because if that was the case, by the time we come to teach the, the decimals, they'd be very confused because they'd be starting here. So we don't start in the ones, we always start when adding in the smallest column. So in this case, the hundredths is my smallest column. So we're going to start adding with my hundredths first. So let's add up the shapes that I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm allowed eight in a column, I don't need to exchange, quite happy with that. Then I move to the next column up. So tenths is my next column, we're going to add up the shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm allowed nine in a column, that's absolutely fine. And then finally, my ones column, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six there. Now at this point, we do need to double check that we have put in that decimal point. So my answer is 6.98, saying those decimals separately. When the children are more confident, again, they can move 
to just column method with the digits. So this time I'm going to add 3.72 add 6.58 okay so I'm going to do exactly the same process 6.58 exactly the same process I'm going to write my first number down okay again it doesn't matter which way those numbers go because I'm going to be adding them up the decimal point doesn't move so I've got 6.58 and then I can add those up start with the smallest column 8 add 2 is 10 if I think of the number 10 I have no number in that column so that will go first and then I will carry that one over to the next column then I go to the next column 7 add 5 7 add 5 is 12 add that one 13 so I'm going to add, put 3 down first carry that one okay and then add the next column 6 add 3 is 9 add 1 is 10 I have no more columns to add so I can write the 10 down now this is the point where some children will leave it and go I'm done okay but actually they would get that wrong if they left it because they do need to put that decimal point in okay and this answer can be written as 10.30 or as 10.3 because all that zero is doing is showing me there is nothing in that column so if I get rid of it it is exactly the same as 10.3 so 10.30 is the same, is equivalent to 10.3, they're exactly the same.